wonder, everybody, um, I want to start this off by saying, uh, give a little background about myself. When it came to uh, making a vote this last year, this last election, it was one of the most important ones. And from, um, from all the news outlets, they were saying that this was the most turnout they had for the younger generation. Well, me personally, I don't like to do anything without being perfectly informed about what's going on and how things actually work, so I chose not to vote. So that's what inspired me to do this topic for this speech, because I want to learn about how the actual voting process occurs so I can make sure I make an informed decision next time the president election comes come around. So that leads me to my question. Does everybody know who they voted for that did vote? No. So, if you didn't vote for um, one of the 55 delegates that got selected to their soul college in California, then you don't know who you voted for. Because the name on the ballot is exactly who you voted for. So, today we're going to be going over first what is the electoral college? Because everybody's heard about it, but that's when you know exactly how it works the pros of it and the cons of it. According to the National Association, the National Archives and Records Administration, it's composed of 538 electors, 435 that counts towards the House, um, 100 that comes, that equals number of Senate, and three for Washington, D.C. Uh, most of the rules that said that it will be electoral college, and how many electors it will be, are established by the individual states. Um, a lot of misconception is that you have to change constitution or make amendments to it to change that to a college, but that's just not the case. Most of them are included in state laws. Um, so the schedule of the voting season goes that the popular vote goes in November, the electoral vote actually occurs in December. Congress takes the count and certification in January, and that's when the um, president is actually certified, and then we have inauguration and so on and so forth. That's why it takes so long from the election night to the actual day that the president gets inaugurated. And the tie breaks inside of the Congress. Um, in 1788, this gentleman right here, Alexander Hamilton, um, actually established it and said the reason for establishing it was basically he didn't want the common man to make an uninformed decision. That's basically the whole idea of the electoral college, to let people that actually focus on what's really going on be able to do so and let the comment who they didn't think were you know, that informed, the news didn't get around like it does today. So he wanted to make sure that the president got elected by the right people. Uh, the pros of it, um, people tend to go back to, that was the idea to found the problems, like I just said, by Alexander Hamilton, um, at the first continental co um, constitutional convention. Um, it makes candidates remember the little guys. Basically, um, candidates can't just focus on big name cities like New York, um, DCs, and all that. They have to go all over the country. And it promotes stability. Um, it promotes stability by having these two behemoths of the parties going at each other. So basically, if you had a whole bunch of different parties, you have a whole bunch of different people get selected to be electors. Because sometimes it comes from the candidates themselves, sometimes they go to the parties um, during their national conventions. Um, according to um, an article published by Springer, um, they made an analogy of the, of the electoral college to the World Series. They said it's not who uh, makes the most runs in the whole series, it's who wins four out of seven games. And it makes sense saying that you don't have, again, you don't have to worry about just going to the big name city, you have to worry about everything and over the long haul and across the whole country. <clears throat> so the cons of electoral college, in the same sense that the uh, they want to make sure you get to smaller states, their vote counts for more than in California. As this map here is, is basically uh, a representation of how your votes are weighted in certain places. And you see the biggest are in Wyoming and North Dakota and DC. Where in California, even though we might have the biggest population, you have the smallest impact on the actual uh, outcome of the election. Um, and that creates also the popular vote versus electoral vote. In two of the last five campaigns, you have uh, 
basically had people who didn't win the popular vote win the electoral vote. And it gets much power in smaller and swing states. In review, we went over the electoral college, the pros electoral college, and the cons electoral college. Um, another thing that got me into this, the game that I did to pick voting is a show that I recently came into. It's called Adam Rose Everything. And he wrote uh, everything from the whole concept of marriage, the con actually the concept of a wedding, to things you wouldn't think about sex, and he actually went over voting. So that's another thing that inspired me to pick this topic. All right, thanks, Jeff.